Hi, my name is Bill Ryden from the Pennsylvania State University Pesticide Education Department. Today I'd like to show you an easy way to calibrate your boom sprayer. The tools that we're going to use are a tape measure, a stopwatch, a calibration cup, some marker flags, and a large tape measure to measure our course. The first thing we're going to do is determine our spacing on our boom sprayer, the nozzle spacing. So we will take our tape measure and simply measure the distance between the nozzles. In this case, they're 20 inches apart. We then refer to our chart to see how much distance we need to travel to cover one 128th of an acre. And you'll see later why that, that is important. Based on our chart, 20 inch spacing, we need to go 204 feet. So our next step is to measure out the course we're going to run the sprayer to see uh, how long it will take to run that distance. Based on our nozzle spacing of 20 inches, we know we now need to measure out a course 204 feet long. So we'll take our long tape measure. This will be the beginning of the course and I'll measure out the 204 feet. For today's demonstration, let me remind you that we are using uh, plain water and we're not using any pesticides. Thus, we don't have any personal protective equipment on. When you do your calibration, you should also be using plain water. There's no need to put the chemical in at this point. A couple of reminders, make sure when you do the test run that you're running the tractor at the same speed and the same RPMs that you would use when you're actually spraying. Okay, I think we're ready to start. We'll have the sprayer come, and it's also good to start the sprayer before the course. Once we get to the flag, I will start the timer, and we'll see how long it takes. We can now see that it took 35 seconds to cover the course. So our next step is we're going to bring the sprayer back and see how much volume comes out of each nozzle in a period of 35 seconds. We have now captured the volume that it took in 35 seconds. We look at our calibration cup and we see that we have captured 20 ounces. Therefore, the rate per gallons per acre is 20 gallons per acre. Now, let me explain that a little bit because it seems complicated, but if you think about it, we're trying to cover one 128th of an acre. So if we captured one ounce, and multiply that by 128 to equal one acre, you would come up with 128 fluid ounces. That is the same as one gallon. So that's the simplicity of this method is it automatically converts the ounces that you catch to gallons per acre. In this case, 20 ounces means that the nozzles are putting out 20 gallons per acre. Our next step is to see if each nozzle is putting out the same amount of water. So we'll take calibration cups and we've used cinder blocks to block them up so we can catch the water effectively. And we'll run this for a specified period of time and then see if each nozzle is the same. It's very important that the nozzle output is within 5% of each other. Oh. You know what? The Now in this case, you can see one of the nozzles was clogged. It's very important not to have clogged nozzles and they all be uniform. Now, 
we fixed the clog nozzle and we had all four nozzles working properly. We've captured the water coming out for the same amount of time. And now our next step is to check and make sure the same volume has come out of each nozzle. In this case, it was 20 ounces. This one's also 20 ounces. The third one You're is only is about 19 ounces. So we're a little bit light on this third nozzle. And the last nozzle is 20 ounces. Again, our target is within 5%. So for 20 ounces on the average, we want between 19 and 21 ounces to be even dis distribution. Also keep in mind that uh, you want to use the same pressure, the same setup that you were going to use when we spray. Also, if you change your nozzles, make sure you change them all at the same time. That way you have uniformity across your boom. Now, even though we've only done four nozzles, in reality, you would want to check all your nozzles across the entire boom to make sure the output is the same. Why should you calibrate? It's very important to have the proper calibration because you want, first of all, the right amount of chemical to go out into the plants. Too little and you may have less effective control. Too much and you may be not only wasting money but also damaging the plants. So calibration is very important for not only results but also to minimize damage to the plants and also to the environment. Also, how often should you calibrate? Is once a year plenty? or should you be going more often? Really, you should be calibrating several times a year. And this quick and easy method is, should not take very long for you to calibrate on a regular basis. Also, the type of material that you're using will impact the amount of wear on your nozzles. A wettable powder will wear and tear on the nozzles more than a liquid application. Keep in mind on your calibration that several factors will influence the amount of chemical and the amount of water that's being put out per acre. Your speed of travel has a major influence. Also, the shape and size of the nozzles that you're using. Also, the operating pressure. Keep in mind that you want an optimum pressure without creating drift. If you go too high a pressure, you're creating more chances for drift because of the smaller water particles. Also, application height. Also, make sure you know what your effective swat width is. And also, the active ingredient needs to be put down on an uh, even application. These are all factors that influence your calibration and your actual use of your boom sprayer. When you're calibrating your sprayer, it's also a good time to check the height of your boom to make sure you're getting even coverage across the entire boom. If you're too low, you may be having gaps or misses in your spray coverage. Too high, you'll have overlaps that where the, the streaks are too heavy. So you want to make sure you know where the height of your boom, check it, and then check your pattern by running across black asphalt, spraying water, and you can watch the drying pattern to make sure the coverage is even. Thank you for joining us today as we learned how to calibrate a boom sprayer. As you can see, it's a very effective but simple method to calibrate. Keep in mind that you want to make sure your calibrations are done frequent enough that you have effective control without wasting money by either using too little or too much pesticide. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at the Pesticide Education Program at Penn State University or contact your local extension agent for more information. Thank you again and hope to see you soon.